Welcome to your Swamp Fever Guidance Tape. Today, we will take a look at the symptoms of Swamp Fever, along with the step-by-step infection prevention plan to keep you and your loved ones safe during this pandemic. Let's begin, shall we? Unlike the common cold, or even a nasty flu, Swamp fever is an extremely fatal infection that can be spread fairly easily if every pony doesn't take the necessary precautions. While it is called a fever, swamp fever is not just that. While a fever will be the starting process of the first stage of the infection, following symptoms will include headaches, chills, fatigue, coughing, and body aches. The first stage is no different from a flu, but as time goes on, The second stage will only amplify the infection. As stage two begins to develop, you will start noticing blotches of discolored skin along your body, along with an amplified cough. As the cough continues, you may notice phlegm and blood bubbling up. This will continue with stage two, along with the following symptoms such as violent sneezing, increased heart rate, restlessness, delirium, along with signs of anemia and emaciation. Before we get into stage 3, let's discuss what happens to the body during stage 4, the final stage of swamp fever. Let's meet Cherry Dew. Cherry was out playing near the swamp with all of her friends. But little did Cherry know, the lily pads near the swamp carried a spore pod that found its way towards Cherry. After the lily pad spreads its spores, a parasite found its way inside of Cherry, infecting her with swamp fever. Here is Cherry before the infection. And here is Cherry after the final stage of the infection. The final stage of swamp fever will see the infected pony's body go through a massive change. The skin will harden and resemble bark found on a tree, though limbs can still remain flexible and mobile. Past the skin, the body retains all vital organs, although bones are dissolved within the body, leaving only behind muscle, organs, nerves, and veins. The bodies also start developing their own sporopods to help spread the pollen, to reproduce, and repeat its cycle. Spores from a final stage infected are incredibly contagious, and contact should be kept at a minimum. Those ponies within the final stage are extremely hostile towards non-infected ponies, and will attack if approached. Their strength is heavily amplified, though their speed is slower than its counterpart, the stage 3 infected. Taking a look at the discolored spots from stage 2, we can compare them to stage 3 as the pony's flesh will begin to rot at an accelerated speed. Along with the rot, the infected pony will begin being hostile towards others and will act aggressively. Unlike the first and second stages, the third stage can spread the infection through its own means. A bite, scratch, or even transfer of blood will cause infection. So make sure to wash your hands and face after dealing with your infected friends. The parasite within the stage 3 infected will manipulate the brain in order to keep it well fed, forcing the host to seek out meat in a delirious, aggressive, and feral manner. That means a pony infected at this stage will either consume itself or it will consume other ponies. Their hunger cannot be satisfied and they will attack if given the chance. Though, unlike your favorite zombie movie, they do keep their brain. They keep their memories and they will use that against you. They will plead. They will scream. Do not let them in. They are not alive. They are not your friends. They are not your family. Put them out of their misery.